Thank you very much. It's uh, so nice to see new and old faces here. Um, I will uh, hopefully uh, tell a story that uh, inspire you, and you get some takeaways. I don't have I don't have any uh, silver silver Allen key for you this morning. Um, Akia is an 80 years old uh, retailer, uh, born in. Um, in the middle of nowhere in Sweden by Inbar Kamprat on his uh, teenagers' uh, years. This is the fur warehouse um, that he used. Back in the days, he started selling pens and uh, matches. Um, today, IKEA is a, a company worldwide with more than 400 locations. This is the blue box. Um, we sell home furnishing and um, services as well. Uh, we are into the energy services, and this is the typical, you know, IKEA store, and the famous map uh, that um, you might know. Why I'm telling you this is uh, because I will relate this to SEO later on. Uh, FY23, the last uh, fiscal year, we have uh, sales for 47.6 uh, billion euros. And 23% uh, of those sales are coming through online. Today, we can say we are an omnichannel retailer. Uh, we got 3.8 billion web visits and 860 uh, visits in stores. And uh, we care about the environment. This is a, a campaign shot in, uh, by the UK team in Costa Rica. Uh, we cite to the many people, this is our vision, to create a better life uh, to the many people. Uh, and this correlates essentially with the long tail when we're trying to sell um, SEO internally. Back in the 50s, um, an employee was trying to uh, step in, uh, uh, put in this uh, into a car, a customer car. He realized that uh, there is no way you can push this, right? So he took away the, the legs, and the flag package was born. And that gave us a, a growth driver. So keep that in mind. Uh, we cite to the many people, and we try to innovate as much as possible, always. That's in the DNA of, of the company. Back to more specific SEO. Uh, I want to start not 80 years ago, but uh, 2008, when uh, we have the monolithical era when it comes to our platform, uh, when we started with our website back in 1998. I started back uh, in 2014. Uh, I met uh, a solution that uh, will require, um, if you wanted a change, it will require uh, to wait to, uh, for two deployments a year writing like a long change request and um, crossing the fingers basically for your changes to, to go out. And uh, that story uh, goes all the way to, to 2020, uh, where there is a big digital transformation. Uh, we became uh, basically uh, a product uh, company, a product-based company when it comes to development. Um, to this day, we are um, uh, using this. Bes before the, uh, the transformation, uh, we have a lot of, uh, I would say, horror stories as well, right? What you can see here is like uh, the transition from uh, different platforms, RW, desktop, mobile, to new web. Uh, that was the internal name, actually. A responsive time targeting desktop mobile users. Uh, we launched in four markets. Uh, that didn't ramp up because we still uh, have a monolithical, out of the box commercial uh, solution. Uh, in uh, early 2018, um, we, um, we started to experiment in these sub domains on building um, microservice archit architecture. And that was like the basically when the changes started to, to be visible. 
So from there we move to, um, to a micro front end structure and uh, things started to change uh, from approximately 1,000 uh, co-workers in the IT department. We basically had, uh, make a big transformation in 2019 and um, change to product-led uh, organization. Uh, so be we became more than five, in between five and 7,000 co-workers only in group digital. What happened with SEO? Well, you move from a monolithic um, structure, infrastructure to um, micro front end driven. Uh, we start to see that, uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, at the beginning, uh, at least the SEO team uh, dealing with editorial, uh, PLP, uh, product information page, teams, and then the things start to grow, and it start to grow. Uh, so we pass from two deployments to like multiple releases uh, as anyone knows, for example, the Spotify story, right? We, uh, today we deploy many, many times a week. And that means for SEO that we have to deal with more than 40 teams deploying to the front end. Is everything uh, good? No, we have fa failures as well, as, especially what you see here is, is uh, the indexation that we have uh, a couple of years ago, uh, last year, uh, where Google just the index the whole two uh, uh, countries uh, disappeared. You will search uh, IKEA Germany and uh, you will find IKEA Austria uh, uh, ranking. So not everything is um, it's, uh, it, it's good. We also have failures, but uh, it's in, in our company DNA to learn from those failures as well. Uh, this wasn't a specific Google, Google bug. It was nothing uh, uh, related to our setup. Uh, the big learning from, from me, is, uh, from my experience dealing with engineers, is that we see a, a big knowledge gap from the early 90s, late uh, 90s and early 2000s uh, when the, the web was easy, right? Playing HTML, CSS to today with uh, engineers uh, wanted to push the latest technology. The knowledge gap goes uh, uh, across all teams that we deal and, and that is, this is something that we tackle through education and training uh, constantly. Um, from there, we move to microservice infrastructure. And basically today, what you see at IKEA is, um, if you see a page, it's, it's, a, it's a group of diffi uh, different uh, HTML fragments. We use each uh, site uh, includes in Akamai, and we build our pages basically uh, in a static way. That has pros and cons, but for SEO is, is, a, is a really good uh, uh, approach. Um, I think in total it's like more than 40 million files that we have uh, statically. Uh, why is, is, is a good approach? Because then we can deal with uh, different teams direct that are deploying directly uh, from navigation, editorial, they do deploy the solutions and we manage to uh, basically have a better control on, of, of uh, site structure, the extra plan, the multilingual SEO setup, uh, and we try to minimize the horror stories actually by doing that. We are operating one uh, domain. The content distribution goes quite simple, right? Uh, from the planner, create the uh, SEO is involved with the PEDEX, product engineer, uh, data and user experience uh, teams. Um, we deliver in UK and Swedish to master versions, and then we have the last mile optimization taken care by uh, local SEOs and uh, content specialists. And this is basically the uh, what you see here is the, the IRW monolithic site structure to today's structure, which is more uniform, especially with, uh, with the multilingual SEO setup. Um, 
is, is the, the desired state you want to end up. Um, I want to talk a, a little bit about tools, the obvious ones, but the internals. What happened when we came, uh, uh, we became uh, um, um, a product-led company and start to do microservices uh, solutions. We managed to uh, create internal tools to handle the metadata. This is Optimiera. This is an internal tool where uh, you can uh, basically see all metadata, open graph, um, as a local SEO, you can optimize and see what is the performance of each page with uh, Search Console data. Uh, this, didn't, this couldn't happen if we are monolithic. Uh, we also manage uh, sitemaps, statistics, um, and we have a, a framework team taking care of core, work, core web uh, vitals. Uh, this is an internal tool that we use to basically measure and keep an eye on, on core web vitals. Today, we are not working with performance budget, but it's, it is uh, in the roadmap. Uh, because we basically, we don't want to stop uh, the development. Uh, this is an overview of all retail units, uh, uh, core web vitals. And if you see closer, we also check out if we have uh, A-B testing running at the same time. So we, we are in a good place, but we can be better, especially now with the new Core Web Vitals uh, uh, metric. This is another part of the SEO tool um, that basically has an overview on the catalog. Uh, every catalog in the, in the, product, uh, in the product catalog. Uh, the idea with this tool is that eventually we will map a knowledge graph that is on the that, that we are building for, for the last three years to, uh, to map all the, the, cat, the categories and be prepared for what the future is, is bringing uh, with search. I don't want to say the magic word, AI. Um, but that's the idea, basically. Uh, what about content? Yeah, well, we have the, the, the three big chunks, inspirational, product, uh, knowledge content, how to, um, we actively work with, uh, with our internal communication agency, um, but we get, I will say the inspirational is the most challenging one. And we, we usually get better results from uh, external challenge when it comes to the, uh, uh, activities around uh, contents that we can promote and actively get a different approach. This is an example of a uh, campaign. Products have always been inspired by how people live in the real world. There's a variety of everyday dilemmas that can be solved or improved by our products. How can we remind people of this? These days, most of us turn to the internet for answers when problems arise. To prove that IKEA can be a part of the solution, we created what we like to call Retail Therapy. We simply renamed IKEA's products as the most common Google searches about relationship problems in Sweden. When you Googled your problem, you found an IKEA product with the exact same name on a site identical to IKEA's main shopping site, a product that might help you improve your relationship at home. So whether it's a snoring husband, a never-ending gaming son, or any other relationship problem you have, IKEA can come to the rescue. Or at least put a smile on your face while you keep Googling for an answer. Thanks for watching. So th th this, this is an example of campaign around our products, around the content uh, that we can, uh, yeah, for obvious reason, uh, wake up uh, human emotions, right? IKEA is about the tone of voice. IKEA brand is about the tone of voice and uh, everyday life for uh, the many people. This is example is actually real life example. It happened a few years ago. I always try uh, tr to bring in because uh, it's important to listen to the customer and what is out there. And everyone can guess these spikes in uh, May or October. No, 
it happened for this sprout and it sparked like basically the need from search to uh, actually develop a new line of, uh, of products. No one? No one could guess? Uh, it's actually how people is uh, using our products in a different way, right? Like, uh, like the previous example, uh, how the user actually generate content and basically it, it has an, a boomerang effect back to your um, to your brand. We have some s several cases where uh, we recreated uh, different setups using our range. Our range is at the very center. Um, response out there, what is happening um, in external channels, the Balenciaga case, right? Comparison. And the agua, por favor or solo agua case with Ronaldo. Um, so IKEA mission is to society with the many people. They, they, I started 10 years ago as the only in-house SU specialist. Um, 2014 ish, I pitched to create a global SEO team and that prepared us for the future. Uh, and the analogy I use is like uh, to present what is the potential in the long tail uh, next to the actual mission of the company to pitch the idea to create uh, a, a global team, right? Today we are uh, 15, between 15 and 20 in the central team and we have at least one local SEO specialist in each market. And um, 2019 we have the the digital transformation that put us in a good uh, position to get the, uh, the corona uh, site. Um, so my recommendation when someone asks me, okay, how is it that we, uh, we uh, pitch or, or, or get the buy-in from the CEO, try to check on the company values, the, the company mission, and try to put it next to next, uh, side by side uh, in order to get the buy-in. My key takeaway, so you get, uh, we get to get to the uh, lunch, uh, is that if you see the, the, the whole visibility of the IKEA.com domain, uh, 80 years old company actively started to work with SEO back in 2013, 14, is that it's an infinite, SEO is an infinite game. And it's about uh, not breaking only the technology part, but the mindsets of your uh, managers or the hypos or the stakeholders, call it whatever you call. It's the human factor. Uh, secondly, your people is your best assets. Casper uh, brought the, the, the Formula One example. Uh, I always uh, bring it back again, right? Everyone competes with the same technology with the same uh, features in the car. It, it's happened with the, the technology as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the, the people that makes the difference. And I, I really like uh, the empathy part and being people's manager um, that Holly uh, talked earlier. Uh, and then we have uh, the importance of build the brand and the content and the knowledge around it. Because the changes that we see, we are transforming from inform informational retrieval, uh, typical site structure, how Google has been operating or search engines are been operating uh, for the 20 plus years to a web that is based on knowledge and trust. Um, so please uh, keep in mind that uh, the change will come and if we are not building our brands around that, uh, it's more likely IKEA will not survive for 80 years more, or your brand or company. Thank you very much. Uh, please reach at any moment, and it's on me, the meatball. <laughs> Thank you.